Hello. I want to thank Coach Fuller inviting me back. This is my third time to be with you folks in Wisconsin. This will be my second visit with your clinic. And I also taught a sports vision program at the University of Wisconsin. Today, we're going to be talking about the MVP converting to a VMP program. Now, what do I mean by that? VMP means a visual, the eyes taking a picture. The mental, the brain processing that information and then sending messages down to the body to give a technical move, which would be arms, legs, hips, et cetera, anything that's going to purport to be the swing. That being said, let's talk about the eyes first. We've looked at this chart. The first chart you look at here is what we call a Snellen chart, but it's one that I designed. The reason it's in black and red and not the normal one you see in with a white background with black letters, and if you go to your eye doctor, which every one of your students should probably go at least once every two years, if the eyes aren't solid, the brain won't get a good image. It can't process a bad picture. The reason I shot it in black and red is because when I put on my 3D glasses, this would be any student you put these glasses on, if you don't have one solid ring and it coming at you in 3D and these two coming together, red flag, you should tell the parent or talk to your team trainer. These letters should remain the same color, okay? This comes with instructions, but basically if you slip the pair of glasses on one of your players and they can't do that, you need to have them checked out, okay? Now, the next chart that we work with is a letter chart. There's 10 letters across and 10 letters down. What I use this chart for is I put a smaller version of that chart on a bat. And what we do is, it's called accommodation, which is the fancy word, is we wanna look from far to near, far to near, far to near. It's good practice. Pete Rose told me that he used to watch the ball come into the catcher's glove and watch it go back. Just staying in touch with the ball mentally. When I take and hold my bat and move back 20 feet, a, a minimum of 15 to 20 feet, and I get here and I pick a letter, let's say I take the top chart, which is an R, and I go down to the T line here, I've got to alternate my glance and go R, T, down to there, A, N, et cetera, et cetera. You're not only practicing moving your eyes, you're getting more of the mental work also. A quick story about a team working this, these drills was George Mason University called me in to work with their team. They start doing some of these drills. The best hitter on the team continually turned out the best score. The worst hitter was not doing well at all. His accommodation was not good. So we start working with him, not only on that, but other drills. I get a call from a gentleman named Mike Toomey, former scout with the San Francisco, with, with San Francisco, uh, and then uh, ended up with uh, Kansas City in their management team. Mike was working at GW at the time with their baseball team. I get a call. He said, uh, can you show me what you're doing? I said, why? He said, well, we just played George Mason, their catcher, very good defensive catcher, but he can't hit a lick. He said he had two jacks and a double. I went up to Coach Brown and said, what's that guy been doing? He said, well, this fellow named Harvey Ratner came in and set up a very nice program for us. I got to be friends with Mike. It's been probably 25 years now where he's going out and done some of my drills because when he was a scout, Mike realized immediately how important checking out the visual system of a potential player 
you go in, you look at film, the kid hit, he does this and that. But uh, up until recently, they weren't doing good full exams. That's where the team optometrist might come in. At a lesser level, you can be able to do these things with the young players on your team. The third thing you can use, maybe some of you have seen this before. It's merely a string with five colored beads on it. They have them three beads, four. This one happened to be five I'm demonstrating. There is a chart showing you how to use this. Very simple, I use one every day because I still play tennis. If your kids are sitting on those computers and now they're on it a lot, they should be doing this at least a couple times a day, walking away from the computer and doing this. Get the directions of how to use it. I could use up a half an hour just going through the drills. What you're looking at here, as far as the charts and the bead and string, all comes with very clear instructions. And I think probably a lot of you have seen the vision ring, which I developed, believe it or not, 50 years ago. Introduced it at a national tennis conference. Everybody took one. Everybody wanted one. I went to the, my first ABCA show, showed it. The coaches saw immediately it had some value. Uh, so there's some major league teams. I know I've used it with five major league teams that I've worked with. And Boston Red Sox uh, bought a whole barrel of these and gave them out to various players and teams to work with. Just to show you, there's some fun drills and games to do with it that the players love. One was I put a point value on a ball a one, a two, a three, and the money ball could be red. You could make it anything you want, but make there should be a money ball. And you just toss it back and forth each other. Not 500 rotations, just very simple. The idea is to catch, catch the money ball. I was pretty good at it. So some of the kids practiced. The second year I went back to the Rangers, I felt like I was in a Western movie. One of the young players, is standing out on the field and he's waving one like this. Okay, well, the old gunslinger and the new kid in town, he took it home because he loved it and he challenged me. I said, wait a minute, I need 20, 30 minutes to warm up because I don't do this every day. It didn't take me long because my brain had processed information going back those 50 years of showing this everywhere. We got to a standoff. The interesting thing, a psychological impression, I would throw this to kids and they would start catching the ball that you call. And then you do, oh, make that a single, make that a double, make that a triple, make that a home run. Now you don't toss it so fast that you can't catch it. So now a kid that's been catching every ball, all of a sudden they're going like this. One of the coaches walked up and said, you're going for the home run every time, aren't you? He said, yeah, well, that's why you're missing. Take a single, take a double. That was a little lesson in mental training. So another, another thing to look at or think about. By the way, I believe How To Sports is, has a virtual booth and is sponsoring some of the speakers. I think probably me. How To Sports has everything here that we talked about. It's a nice package to have. If you just want to dismiss vision training, and just get on the tees and keep hitting, that's up to you. It starts here. When it gets to here, I'm going to tell you a couple stories. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. This is a home plate and one of my advanced technical pieces of equipment was I had a slide projector. And in that slide projector, I had a lens that I could put on the front of it. And I could put in anything from a one to an eight ball slide. And when I moved it around, it was different every time. I'm not sure you can hear this or not, but that's a half a second. That represents an 84 mile an hour fastball. Now, here's what happened. I'm working with the Baltimore Orioles. 
their starting catcher is in a slump. His swing looks okay. Okay. He's big and strong. His eyes are fine. Harvey, what do you think is going on here? I said, well, let me set up a slide projector and let's do a couple things. This is an absolute true story. Greg Biagini, the hitting coach at the time, was there. I pop up a five ball slide. Zit, half a second. Chris, what'd you see? Uh, let's see. I got one down the middle and two inside. Okay, Chris, what about the two away? Uh, I didn't see anything away. Biagini's going, hmm. Well, we're dealing with a dead pull hitter. That much I knew. His brain did not even look for that. Okay, you're a dead pull hitter looking in. Believe it or not, you're not even hardly seeing anything away. We go to work. I established a personal relationship with Chris over two years because I worked with the Orioles for two years and set up a program. He actually came to my training center and we worked away, 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 mixing up, doing certain different uh, technical skills also. They go up to New York, to the Yankees, and Chris gets two jacks center and center right. They go to Cleveland, same thing. Now he's got four jacks and two series, and everybody's wondering, what the heck's going on? He normally doesn't hit away, okay? So now Chris Hoyles is learned to train his brain to see the whole plate. This one is just as amazing. Curtis Pride, the only hearing impaired player to play in the major leagues, had about a nine, 10 year career. I also had the pleasure of working with him for over three years. Here's what we found with Curtis. The Orioles came down to my training center with a couple of players. They, what's this guy doing? Let's see what he's doing, et cetera, et cetera. So we get the lens, we put it on the slide projector and I explained to the to uh, Reed Nichols what we're doing. I pop up an eight ball slide. Curtis may have been looking for something big, but he doesn't really know what's coming, okay? In that half a second, he pointed out every pitch. Some of them were marginal because this, we, we had about 20 different slides were marginal. That's when uh, Reed Nichols and Doug Melvin said, I think maybe we want to have you come up to Camden Yards and talk about bringing you down to spring training. Once I got to spring training, we had rings. We had charts from this because we weren't doing slide projectors, everybody. If any of you will do this or have seen it in the past, I developed what I think, I'm going back over 30 years, maybe more, wall ball skills. Here's the way it worked. Take your hitter, move him back about six to eight feet from a wall. Get some Nerf balls. You stand there, he's here, start throwing Nerf balls and telling him to start hitting what he sees. Now, after a while, and you would have to call me so I could give you the whole program, but if I threw him a red ball on the outside third, he could hit it. If it was a red ball on the inside, you take. We did everything from that to situational hitting and more. You get your wall ball skills going, okay? You're going to get some kids that can hit, okay? So the other story I can tell you, I'm not demeaning anything to do with some of these really expensive uh, machines that are out there. There's two-dimensional screens and you push a button, this goes here, this. I will say this unequivocally, and I would discuss it with anybody. I don't want to learn to play a three-dimensional game on a two-dimensional screen. I took a two-dimensional screen that I had. I was hired as a consultant to try to put something together. So I have a prototype that's working. I take it to a tennis camp and I get some, oh, 11, 12, 13 year old kids. The idea was to punch out as many lights as you could on this screen. And we were working at 25 punches. 
okay? These kids were up 18, 19, 20, 20. They're playing video games, okay? Now, how that's going to help you hit a baseball, I don't know, okay? I took it to another student, okay? He's getting eight, seven, nine. I mean, he looked like he was in slow motion. I need to get another readout. I take it back to the tennis camp. Boop, boop, bing, 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 bing. Okay? I take it back to the student. And I said to him, oh, excuse me, Sugar Ray, it was Sugar Ray Leonard. I worked with him before one of his fights and we played some tennis and had some other skills that we built in. I said, why are you doing that? I said, Harvey, Angelo Dundee trained me and Muhammad Ali, a lot of good fighters. We get here, you don't wanna be doing this when you're boxing. You wanna slip and make the guy pay. He went back and showed it to Angelo because with all the training they had, nobody had ever talked about that. The other thing they talked about, which we're gonna get into later, is blinking. You're gonna be amazed when you think about what a blink can cost you when you're trying to hit a fastball. Okay, so we've talked about our visual component. We've talked about our mental component. Let's talk about our technical component, okay? This is a flat bat. Some of you may have one, some of you may have seen it. I hope you do. Basically, what it is, it's an ax. Because if you take an ax, give it to a kid, tell him to go chop down a tree, pretty sure he's not going to be doing this. But we put a flat handle on it. If any of you coaches can send me where I can buy an ax with a round handle, I'll send you one of these. I'm not talking about making one. I'm talking about going into a store. They don't. They make them with oval handles. Why? Because that's the way you grip to do this. When you take extra weight and put it at the end of a stick or a rod, it wants to turn over. That is kinesthetically what happens. It turns over. So a baseball bat is made to turn over. You have to learn, Billy, Joe, palm up, palm down. I would tell you unequivocally, Get a kid who's having some trouble with his upper half. Put this in his hand. Go to our video on my website and watch what happens within a few minutes if he goes through the drills, if he doesn't start looking like that. I'm not saying it's going to be pretty at first, but you're going to get that instead of that. Okay. Super important. I won't say a quick fix, but a correct fix. Okay. If your kids want to hit baseballs, and they all do, by the way, that wooden one is for hitting tennis balls or wiffle balls. Don't be hitting baseballs with those. Otherwise, it'll last you about one hit. This one is made of a high-tech plastic material. When I was working with Dave Hudgens, when he was still with Oakland, flew me out to make some videos with him, and I took some of the bats with me. We're hitting, we're down on a field. All of a sudden he says, Harvey, Harvey, come here, come here. He says, what? He said, I just had one of our players, big kid, about 6'4", 220, went 340 with this. And it's not going to break. It's a hard density plastic. I said, yeah, what happened? He said, I've been trying to get him to level that swing because he's big uppercut. He said, I asked him, what, what professed you to do that? He said, coach, believe it or not, when I was swinging, I saw the ball going over this. I kind of figured out how to square it up a little bit better, okay? I'm not going to talk technique. That's what you guys do for a living. Although uh, Joe Madden, when I was with the Angels, asked me to work with some of the players. I'm a tennis player. Been a tennis player forever, ever, and ever. Joe even said, Harvey, your hands are better than baseball players. Everybody who knows a little bit about sports, you're in here, you're there, you're defending. So, so your hands have to be that good. Just like you impart some theories, it's not one swing. We all know, yeah, if, if you could get every ball coming down the middle, of the it gets ball gets in on you, gets out on you. 
we learned when I was with the Rangers, Jesse Barfield and I did some work with the extra kids and we worked on fouling pitches off. After a base hitter getting a solid hit, your best friend is a foul ball. You're not gonna let Mr. Blue punch you out. You can knock one again. How many times you, you go back and look at for you older guys like me, Wade Boggs slapping a ball foul or another player getting in here and chopping it down, getting to see another pitch and maybe turning that one into a hit. So look at your flat bat. These, here again, I don't want to sound like an infomercial, but if you look at the website, you'll see some really good drills. And do me a favor, okay? Rick Down, may he rest in peace, was with the Orioles and with the Yankees as their hitting coach, hitting instructor. On the video, it was made, I'm old now, I was 75 years old. Take a look at the last ball that I hit. It's a lime green wiffle ball. And then call me and tell me that it doesn't work when an old guy like me can hit a rope like I hit. I take pride in it and I brag about it because I wasn't a young kid. There again, the good tennis hands didn't hurt, but squaring this thing up really helped a lot. Okay, so where are we? We've got our visual component. We've got our mental component. We've got our physical component. I would profess to say that if you work a little bit in of the other two, rather than just BP, soft toss, hitting off of a tee, by the way, you can't see it, but in a few minutes, you're going to see my batting cage. I'm standing in my batting cage. And you'll notice it's really going to take up 12 feet. And the width is the arc of your swing, okay? I would ask you to look at it. And then on our website, you'll see a series of drills. And there again, I hit a couple balls on the drills, even at 81, boy, that's old, that were spot on. If you have any questions, I love for coaches to send me emails, to give me a call, to set up a rapport, but over the years, I've been able to get some converts, people that say, okay, count me in. You know, I'll get some beads and string or I'll do some Nerf ball, I'll do something. I would say this, in fact, when your spring training starts, if you happen to have a plastic flat bat, BP, first at bat, you step into the box, you have to square something up before you can pick up your bat. That wraps up the VMP, visual, mental, physical part of the program. You'll now see part two, which is another device or tool that I've developed to work on timing, rhythm, speed of recognition. So we're gonna jump right into that right now. Now we're going to look at the best tool in your toolbox to learn timing. This is a 3D simulator. There's four tubes. The first one is vertical. The next three go here. And like I talked about, this is my home office. I can do a full hitting lesson in this office because it's only 12 feet long and approximately 10 to 12 feet wide or however the arc of the swing is. Okay, so knowing that we have that distance to work with and we can hit and take full cuts either with a conventional tee or the twin tee, you're in business. Let's talk about milliseconds because that's what the, we're boiled down to. There are a thousand milliseconds in one second. An 84 mile an hour fastball is a total of 500 milliseconds. If you're playing high school, into college, major league, it's a snap, okay? Hitting 84 is no big deal. You look at 84 and time that enough on this unit, you'll get that rhythm in your head. If you're looking for that 84, believe me, you're gonna hit it. 
what we have to consider is four things that also you have to think about when you're a hitter. Number one is everybody writes up charts at about 60 feet, six inches. And in essence, with a stride, it can easily be 55 feet. Most of the charts that I've looked at, and there's one that comes with the simulator, they talk about 55, okay? If the guy's got a longer stride, you've got to uh, you know, adjust yourself to that. The other thing you have to deal with if you're outdoors, if you're playing in the wind, it's gonna have some effect on the ball, blowing it or blowing it. Not a lot, but at least keep that in mind. If you're indoors, okay, you have deceleration. Indoors or outdoors, whether you're looking at live pitching or you're looking at your simulator. Then comes what we talked about before, the blink. 100 to 400 milliseconds, depending on who you are and how you've trained yourself. So think about that 84 mile an hour. Some guys, it's a change up nowadays and you blink and you use up 250 of your milliseconds. That doesn't give you much time, okay? So those are the four things you have to deal with. How do we stop this light? Okay, right now, I'm just leaving it on a low speed, but as it, as it comes down, I can stop it with a stop switch. For my tennis game, I still will go down there and practice pretty big speedy balls coming to me, getting in a volley position and just coming down and working on volley. The one thing that you have to think about, and it's on all of our instructional videos, when do you launch? You don't launch when it's right on top of you. There's a spot, you're gonna see it in all the drills that we've designed. I had a young man, 6'3", 220, he was always late. His perception of where his launch was, wasn't even close. Now, if you run across a guy and he's throwing in the mid to high 90s, that'll be probably a relief pitcher, okay? Because nobody's gonna throw 90 a whole game. That release is almost when you have to start starting the bat. You get up to high speeds, what happens is your bat doesn't hit the ball, the ball hits your bat. Pick a spot and go for that spot. The level of play, Little leaguers, you might be at 46 feet. You set it up by looking at the chart and go from there. The further up you go, you start making your adjustments on speed. If you're gonna be hitting with a flat bat or your bat and you're hitting, as you take your swings, stop. I stopped it with a verbal command. It's gotta be loud, it's gotta be robust, as you can see, Right there, I stopped that one right in front of the plate. So I'm sitting here, just looking at a medium speed, which is pretty good for an old guy. Just I'm right here. I get three indicators. I get a red, green, light green, stop. Okay. The reason for the indicators, that's a wind up. So many ball machines, balls, you just dump balls in, they start coming out. You don't have any trigger. Okay. You're getting to hit, but not the best of all possible worlds. So when I designed it, I designed it to have that trigger in there, okay? You have to use that loud stop. You don't have to scream, but it's got to be pretty strong. A lot of times, if I'm working with somebody, we won't even hit the first day. We will sit and take pitches, lower half, getting on it. and. You can, go, you can go up to the highest speed we have is 100, but realistically, 84, 93 makes a lot of sense, okay? The one thing to remember about facing a pitcher, it's a little bit of a guessing game, but when you're facing a guy and he has three or four pitches and location, he's, he's gonna have a good day probably. Here's the thing that I looked up. Go back and look at Roger Clemens' first four years in the major leagues. And when I was with the Rangers, I sat in on some of his lectures to the pitchers. He said, I had a fastball. I wasn't sure where it was going to go sometimes, but I got drafted on a fastball. I had a blankety blank 
curveball. Nobody knew where it was going, especially me. He said, year four, when I started to develop that change up and I would throw a 77, 78 change up, how fast do you think my fastball looked? Okay, there is a complete series of drills. One of the tubes, the last tube near home plate, you can actually slide vertically to where you think curveballs are going to be breaking. Okay, I remember showing this Kansas City Royals, some of their scouts, and one guy came over and he moved and said, well, that's Scherzer's slider right there. That's where it's going to break. And I said, well, yeah, but Kershaw, his fastball, blah, blah, blah. And they're discussing where to slide this last tube based on where the ball breaks. You look at where a ball's breaking, it's down and away. How guys, if they think it's coming, can stay so far back in the box and think they're even gonna come close. So we've taken all that into consideration. Uh, what you get with a simulator, of course, a home tee, uh, a home plate, you get wiffle balls, you get a chart, just to be doing your math and making sure you know what you're hitting, what you're looking at. You're gonna find, you're gonna get fooled when you think that you can launch or get that front foot down when the ball is two or three feet away. It's not gonna happen, okay? You won't see the ball come off the bat either, but don't worry about that. If your technique is good and your head's in a good position, when you come in and you get ready to stop, okay, I'm just letting it set up, one, two, three, okay? I'm not looking back for the ball because that's what's giving me all the information, my eyes. So I can't be moving that thing around. I need to have that good, good technique of being in here. You, you take 10 minutes, 15 minutes a day before you start your hitting, or if you don't have enough time, just take pitches. You'd be surprised how effective that can be, okay? I want to end on a little bit of a note. Uh, I thought I had it, but I don't. I end every talk and every lecture I do with the following. I have a sheet and it looks like your high school graduation book and there's little pictures in it. This is the most important thing I'm gonna say today. And there's Joe Jones, 20 years old. Billy Smith, 20, names and ages of young men who died in Iran and Afghanistan. I tell a kid, he went 0 for 3 and made an error. I said, that's not such a bad day. Coach, I don't know what you're talking about. I'll tell you what, tomorrow morning, you get to wake up, have breakfast, maybe go on your computer till the pandemic is over and maybe work out, you're gonna have a good day, okay? Those young men don't have any good days left. Last time I did this lecture, a dad came over to me and put his arms around me and he was crying. I knew exactly what was going on. He was a veteran who was in combat. And he said, Harvey, I think that's the most important thing I've ever heard you could say to young men. It could be young women also, but mainly young men that you just had a good day. Go out and go back to work. You can have a good, maybe a better day tomorrow, okay? That's my credo. I hope you've enjoyed the presentation. I wanna thank Coach Fuller again for having me out. If you have any questions, go to the website. It's HRA Sports Surgeon. Call me, drop me an email, send me a text. I always love to talk hitting, okay? That being said, I want to wish you guys good fortune. Be well and stay safe. Thank you.